Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital. This is the Get Ready With Me episode where I should be putting on makeup, but as you can see, I woke up like this. <laughs> <laughs> I already have makeup on, so I'm just going to try to do maybe my brows or something. Um, and then during this episode, we go through questions and comments, and we just have random fun discussions. Yes. Bonga, how are you doing, girl? I'm good. How are you? You're good, but she's so nasal. Shave, I just Hello. Good day. Yeah, I got you a shave. Yeah, I got you a shave. And you got flu from your daughter. Yeah. That's what I don't know. How did she get the flu? I have no idea. If not from the adults. And no one in the house had flu. Isn't this the second time she's giving you guys flu? Yes, it is. I my. Asante to danger. Asante. Bye. Okay, yeah, let's start. So, on um, the episode, yeah, my mom had me at 16. Sarah Hannock says, Why should the support come into play when the girl is already pregnant? Mm, Where is coming. the support structure when the girl child is growing up? When she is navigating ch- teenage life and its ups and downs. And quite a few people resonated with this comment. I thought we need to definitely discuss this. Mm, it's, it goes back to even similar to that uh, chunky girl, you guys must be healthier thing. Borderline, it could be come across as on the judgmental side. I get that there are, you know, there's support that a teenager should have when going through puberty and whatever. But I remember I had an aunt that used to say, a man and a child don't put your faith in them. Like you it. Like you just never know what they do when they leave the house. Yes. And and I definitely think that's true to like teenagers. So such a comment can make you feel like you're not observant enough as a parent, mm. and it can put the blame now on the parent and whatever. And we've seen kids that come from, you know, like fully supportive households where things like that still happen. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's an unavoidable thing. I'm not saying don't support your child and don't try to be observant and watch them. But I do think one, I get like you it. You just don't know what they do when they leave the house. And you know, because of the curiosity of um, mm. kids or teenagers, mm. Mm. then it comes to the conversation. Yeah, do we make contraceptives then way more? Um, what is this not accessible? Because they kind of are accessible, although it's not easy for kids to go in, especially at a particular age, to say I want yes. a contraceptive, right? Yes. Because they get judged. But is it to say should we? You know what? These kids are exploring. These kids are doing these things. Do we go to saying we need to encourage co- contraceptives more and clearly do a lot more work on um, what is this condom use? Mm. You know. And also, I just remembered uh, Dr. Peter's comment around why children fall pregnant quicker. Remember, he mentioned the whole they haven't been tainted by STIs and things yes. like that. So they've got these beautiful, perfect, healthy bodies to carry this thing. Mm. You know, which is also another and factor. I remember that we were we shocked to... at how early he yes. says. Yeah, so that's bearing. another factor that you need to consider that this person is actually at peak fertility. Because it starts going down, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a downward slope. <laughs> so that's another thing to consider. Just, you know, um, yeah. But I hear what you're saying. Maybe it's just more education around it. I think another thing is more consensus around what is being taught. Mm. Because, I mean, the government is saying anything under 16 is statutory rape. Meaning they're saying you can have sex from the age of 16. The church is saying you can't have sex before marriage. Um, I know traditionally they check you at 21. Mm. What's the consensus? You know, you know. I think for me it's more of a consensus thing. Yeah. Society needs to be pushing one message, which is a difficult thing because now it's like culty. Yeah, and it, what I'm saying, <laughs> but you know, besides one message, our message are dri- driven by different things. Yeah, you know, some is religion. Yeah, some is just age. Yeah, yes. like it's coming from different bases. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, so it would be difficult to push to one, one message. Yes. But the one thing we can all agree on is that kids do engage. And this is even before, now, now that I think about it, um, teenage pregnancy even happened before, like oh, now absolutely. when there's a lot more education and so forth. Yes. So I'm just wondering, where's the disconnect? And I think this is where, um, what's this, conversations like one of our subscribers suggested, where we need to bring in someone of, of, of a particular age group, maybe quite young, to give us a perspective on mm, things, you know, mm. because it would be nice to get into their head to be like, what was happening? Absolutely. Like when that lady made the comment to say, where's the support? I remember how my mom used to have this thing where she used to say, the four walls you live in now, I once lived there. As in the age of 16, I was once there. I know what you're going through. And I remember thinking, 
you do not have mixed it you know nothing of what <laughs> i am going through you do not know what it is not to be on somebody's bbm status mom do you know anything about that <laughs> you know in my head and now looking back i see how i want to say it to my niece to say dog i know what you're going through mm. you know i know the pressures you're going through but even when you say that they just can't fathom that you understand it's only the older you go when your parents advise you or your mom advises you, that you realize she really gets it you know, you only you really hit that epiphany around 25 for me. That's when they start becoming more your friend. Yes. Than just your parents. The dynamics change. The dynamics now. change, you know, and you really view them and rate them. But teenage years, you can't imagine that they understand what it is for Lavos not to like me back. <laughs> <laughs> that was my high school crush, Lavos. His name was Lerato. <laughs> <laughs> so, then it's from Mitzi Lavas. Lavos. Oh, yes, love us. Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Because yes, that yes. sounds weird to me. I'm like, love, love us. Yes, it was love us. Oh, love you're us. such a snob, Ursula. <laughs> love us. <laughs> Why am I embarrassed? I'm just joking. Why am I embarrassed? <laughs> I can't remember why I told me red right now. I'm so embarrassed. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> um, and then on the episode, Impact of Blesser Culture on Women and Men with Jackie. Um... Uh, Rebao says, as a homosexual young female, I relate because the pressure of being the funder of the relationship is weighing me down and makes me feel like I am not trying enough. I'm just 21, I'm a student funded by Nepsis for heaven's sake. Sometimes it makes me feel like the love is an expense. Mm. <laughs> I must be honest, I did chuckle at this <laughs> because it's wild. A child on NS fuss is, is struggling with Mdolo because of money. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? That's wild. Totally like, that's when you expect you. love to be the, at its purest. Yes. Yeah. But even yeah. they are experiencing what it is to... And also, the, oh, there were too many dynamics to it. One, they're a lesbian, mm-hmm. right? And the part where it's like, it's two women. Why am I funding this? Well, how does it fall how on me? How does it yeah. fall on me? They, they shouldn't be like a gender role. So to... So you know yeah. hear what I'm saying? And then the second one was like, I'm a student. Yes. How is this? How is it logical? Like there were just so many layers and it's a to it. Thing yeah. I know mm. someone who's the same age, and he's genuinely like, no, Bonga, you know, you need to give these girls for a timing, or you know something. Otherwise, if you don't, they, and I'm like, what are you in varsity? Oh. And I was trying to motivate him, like, you know what? If a girl is looking at you, and and um, what is this? And they trying to make it about finances, look at them and see if they can give themselves those things. And then only then you can, you know, rate them. And he's like, that's not how it works, Bonga. Girls want money, whether young, whether what. I'm actually going to tell a story that's not mine. It's my brother's when we were much young. I think he was in grade one or grade two. Yeah. Theo, I'm sorry to tell your story. But I remember he, there was this girl he liked and he wrote a letter, will you be my valentine? And he put a one rand coin in it. Firstly, a young boy at that age knows that that concept this jolo thing comes with some money i need to show yeah. that i can provide girl here's one red note you know for this in an envelope and the girl then opened the envelope saw the one rent took the one rent out and then tore the letter without reading it in front of him <laughs> why are you laughing <laughs> <laughs> right in front of him in front of him and threw it in the bin I, like as you were telling the story I, i'm realizing how like it's so ingrained you know, but the fact that you took, why did you take the one red girl? Exactly. Like, there's so many layers to the story, you know. Uh, and your kids, seven years old, like, ooh, ooh, <sighs> Yeah, but no, it's, it's, it's quite, um, what is this? I don't know if it's sending or what, because like we've said in conversations around this, like, that's the truth. A lot of women want the security. But what and... is that? Is it that now, in order to be in a sincere, what we would deem a sincere relationship, you mustn't get any gifts from your partner? What are we saying? What's the whole sentence here? We're What's saying the end of the that sentence? It shouldn't, it shouldn't be the prerequisite. Uh, it definitely shouldn't be. I remember when I was in varsity and random girls were standing uh, just outside the um, where they do, you know, varsity radio yeah. in university. Yeah. So I was standing just outside and I was telling these girls, I'm dating someone right now and they are done and they just started working and I'm about to finish because she started uh, f- her first year before me. Okay. And then I came when she was doing her second year. So I mean, logically. And I remember explaining that to them. And then they were asking me, oh, so she's working. She's at an office. And one of them literally looked at me and was like, she's going to leave you. (laughs) (laughs) You understand what I mean? 
like like because she's gonna be supposed to people can give her more more money mm. and not only that she has yeah money at at this point mm. i think when when we started talking about this what i was what i'm more concerned about is what is it that perpetuates this way of thinking mm. like where do we learn it because our mothers guys b- baby baby boomers i don't know maybe it's just the context i come from but i've never heard my mother and her friends emphasize that idea i've only ever heard that idea from younger people from that mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. um and and i wonder what is it that that instills it in us maybe it's the fact that we saw our mothers not live lives of luxury and now we're like no 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 i'm not I willing to accept me. this i need a man who's able to you know take care I like of what me. you're saying where does it come from because we know well is it that we know because we do know that women have been if you look at you know traditionally a man has to prove that he can take care of your daughter isn't that that proven that's finances? no ball of it no yes. but, that's what but remember is. yeah so but isn't that in no in but the expectation wasn't of? on this day and age we can say it's, a, it's become a bit ridiculous mm. the expectation was low baller and and have the bare minimum. Yes. Like my daughter yes. shouldn't go hungry. Yeah. You know, it wasn't lavish. Like the flamboyance yes. of it. Live live in the in the burbs in yes. an estate. Yes. Now it comes with all of that. You have to be able to provide all of that. Yeah. I think yeah. Uh, when I think about conversations in J, it's a lot of I'm not saying this is the root. I'm saying mm. uh, just thinking about it. Um you, you see a lot of um young women who say, I saw my mother break her back running this family. Mm. I'm not going to do it. Mm. You know, mm. black it's, women it's... sacrificing a lot for a lot for their families, breaking their backs, carrying the whole family, even the men, and saying, I'm not going to do this. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because this ties a lot into a conversation that we're planning to have later uh, regarding the manosphere. Because unfortunately, this type of mentality of women saying, for every yin, guys, like there's a yang. Mm. You need to understand that. And it's okay if you feel that a guy needs to take care of you. Okay, fine. But you must understand if that becomes a prerequisite for you, understand that every man has a right to have a prerequisite as well. Mm. Like oh, yes, if absolutely. I'm, if you're saying to me, because now it be, you're, you're, you're speaking of it as a transaction, mm. right? Because I understand, me as a man, I understand the principle of taking care of my family but i never want to look after a family that values me because of it Mm -hmm. right i want to come home and daddy's home you know my husband is home or my partner's home for the sake that i'm home yes everyone is happy everyone is fulfilled right and then i come with what i've what i can bring to the table when 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 it's what i brought to the table is what validates me from coming coming home and then i think the danger of that it also creates i think it's the conversation we had uh, a lot with jackie as well that you've created a ying you've pulled and you've told your you've told me that you're entitled to this what am now ask yourself what am i going to come and tell you that i'm entitled to yeah right mm. you have to always look pretty have mm. to mm. have to for you to qualify to be with me, mm. you always have to have sex with me this when often. When I want. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Cause you and in have, a way I want. Exactly. Mm. You have but, made, yeah. you have reduced my worth to you, to what I can provide for you. Then I will reduce, reduce your, your worth to worth. me. That's unfortunately the mentality the, that it It becomes creates. that, a transaction, you mm. know. But also, like you said, I remember I put it on my WhatsApp. I said, I don't want to ask the girls. Because if you ask the girls, will you stay with your man even if he goes broke? Girls always say yes. Yes. I said, guys, how confident are you that your wife or your partner, girlfriend, whatever, will stay with you should you have not? And uh, guys, I cannot tell you how many men wrote no. No money, no girlfriend. Mm. Simple. I would need to go back to the drawing board, find myself, collect my sense, and get another girlfriend and start again. You know, no money, mm. no girlfriend. And these are people mm. that I know in like long term relationships. But I remember there were a few. I mean, there was this one guy who said, no, three months into my relationship, I lost my job. And my current wife, who was my girlfriend, then held it down. Yo. You know? Mm. And oh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was interesting to hear from men how secure do you feel in your relationship? Exactly. In the same way one could ask a woman, how secure do you feel in your relationship if you were to have your face burnt? Yes. Uh, 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 exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. 
you know how how secure are you that this person beyond what you look like is there and you've already told him that without money yes we're gonna need to renegotiate this mm. relationship but but like you're saying is that the yin to the yang because sometimes we can look at it as women demand money but there are men that are saying this is what i have to offer and it's money mm. do you get what i'm saying mm. Mm. you know you you see men or you hear of men or you talk to men that they present money that's, true. that's what's on the table for offering and then it's difficult to see them differently then Mm. They didn't allow you to get to know them, actually. Exactly. They've just been love bombing you and showering you with gifts, and and then how you know? So it's just that, like, what is being offered, mm. and and when somebody takes you up on that offer when you go broke, whose fault is it that I can't see you as anything else? If you, it was the basis, you, of if how it was you the basis of how you you know when you listed your selling points as a boyfriend, your selling point was any <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know mm. and I, I don't know if this is something that's commonly understood but something happens to a guy's confidence when he starts having money oh yes oh, yeah well no one thing one thing women oh, but have even girls call, nah, I'm 40. I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but now here's the thing your confidence is different right mm. this these are the, the this is this is a nuance and it's very subtle mm. between men and women mm. Your confidence is not that I can, now that I'm, I've received my paycheck, I can now get a man, yes. any man. Oh, For us, it directly not. translates to that. That's so true. It directly wow. translates to that. Like women, women, I, I remember, I have this conversation quite often that women from, guys, from when we are in high school, even primary, really we, we are raised with the mentality that we're the hunters. Mm. right like we are the hunters and you must understand this to a, ma a man who was born with a hammer every problem is a nail mm. every problem needs to be hammered in so we are taught from you guys are the gatekeepers like we will be in, in high school sitting amongst a group of girls and the guy walks past and everyone's like, oh, get up. Get up. Get up. you know <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you understand and um, and the thing is that drills it into us there are certain women mm. who teach us when we're younger that we don't qualify to be with ah. them yes. like there are certain girls i knew i won't lie no, to you no, no. i knew when i was in high school that there are these girls friend flip side to the coin yeah. i just want to bring you to a girl's perspective mm -hmm. we've also had where the guys scream for the specific girl who had the bigger boobs the bigger booty and it reminds you that you without see here, that you don't qualify to ever be the one that you 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 get this like a classic. <laughs> I was never who get this like a classic. I get you. I you get know? you. Here's, <laughs> Sorry, here's, here's the difference though. <laughs> here's here's the huge difference, uh, right? Um, you are talking about and, and I was having a conversation with someone recently, and mm -hmm. they came to that realization that mm -hmm. they were talking about how you know how there are certain guys who will come to you and be like, yo, my sister. Like they, they just have this confidence mm -hmm. here and they come and ask you out wherever, mm -hmm. you understand? And then there are certain guys who never will ask you out. The point I'm making is this, to her, it only clicked then that those guys that have that confidence are the exception. Mm -hmm. It never clicked to her, Guti, there are so many guys who do not have that confidence okay. to actually come up to you and say, yo, my sister, how are you? And actually approach you. They mm. constantly struggle with qualifying themselves. Like I need to qualify myself and say, Izubonga at, am, am I worth going and asking that mm. out? And when you get a job, it eliminates all of that. Mm. It, it, it sort of makes you feel like worth. You understand? Now I'm worth mm. sitting next to Ubonga and saying, my yeah, my sister. You know, well, look at what I'm drinking. Him. I'm drinking Hennessy. Oh, that's it. not the you can, same You can tell struggle. a guy that's just gotten a nice tender or something. Like he's no, even even his like, arrogance is high. The ones you know, like from uh, varsity. Yes. To oh yeah. Like, okay. Like, okay. <laughs> Remember when we were sitting at Kwamai Mai, the Mai. Yes. <laughs> and that guy came to you like, I'm an accountant now. <laughs> What you gonna do? Because I used to have a crush on you. And like literally <laughs> telling Bonga or Kyaseveza now I'm an accountant. Exactly. And before when I used to climb taxis with you, you were looking the other way. And Bonga was just like, dog. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So the point I'm making basically is, and this is something we need to come to accept, right? Because every time we have conversations about men and women and the different struggles we have, 
there's always someone who tries to make it yeah but even us yeah but the thing is yes there is yeah but even us but the point is our struggles are very different not the same. and men mm. experience their struggles differently as opposed to how women experience theirs yes. like guys here's the thing i can say with confidence right even if you are not and i i do acknowledge that there are women who don't get as much attention as other women right but you somewhere can. some guys even even if it's the random construction worker someone is giving you att- even and I'm, I'm even including the attention that you don't want yes right someone is giving you attention and i'm not talking about the attention that's um, offensive yeah. i'm not including that i'm just including getting some attention yeah. now imagine in guys world guys I, mm. I can go up until i'm 30 35 no woman has ever shown interest because women understand and they know even if they are interested mm. right women know he needs to make the move yeah they're not the we can sit and have just conversations outside of church guys i've talked about this before though yeah that conditioning is on both ends because mm-hmm. being a girl girls i know you've shot your shot put it there in the comments of what happened guys don't like that stuff yeah yeah you, you see that's another I that's know. another thing <laughs> here's, a, here's another thing here's another thing remember 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 this uh. always every time you you make a conclusion like that uh. here's one two things i'll say that uh. women tend to do wrong uh. whenever you guys do anything make any advance towards starting a relationship uh. and you 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 get gunned down uh. it's therapy to you it's the worst thing ever you understand what i'm saying uh. for you as women it's like and for you us, guys... we have no choice. If I can tell you how many times I've been rejected, if I can mm-hmm. count from my high school to now, mm-hmm. you understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's been my life. I have no other option. Mm-hmm. I, I can't sit down and expect a woman to come to me. Yes, um... I agree. But you must also remember this. You might be speaking about the exception. Mm. You might... Ma- Ursh, there's a reason why only... Oh, I shouldn't say the whole word. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why OF... Mm-hmm. Mo has mostly men. There's a reason why Bumble has mostly men. There's a reason why Tumblr has mostly men. Because men know they have no other choice. There's there's a handful of women for every man that's on that app. For me, it's easier for me to Leave come and hunt here. The commodity. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, guys. <laughs> and I agree. I agree. One thing about women from... I don't see it that way, but it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, Ubonga yeah. has I actually agree. said the secret. Ubonga has mentioned with confidence, but to me, guys, when I... Every time I shot my shot, it landed. I've never failed, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can't relate. Excuse me. Maybe I'll only shot at Excuse me. <laughs> 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 so you shot your shot many times? Many times. And a walenda. Mm, ah, you know, that makes you seem like <laughs> Every time I've shot a shot. Yeah, it's yeah, landed. Landed. yeah, yeah. Land bullseye. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. Teach me something. <laughs> <laughs> Please and I that. agree. From very young to very old, you have a lot of options as a woman. Okay, when when you said the options thing, I, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. As a woman, you constantly always, so all the time. You go to a coffee shop. Days, you uh, yeah. Sometimes you're looking on your like worst days, some, you, some days. Some days you can't even carry like your own groceries out of the store. You know what I mean? Like mm. they're always guys. They're ready to shoot their shot. And yes, I couldn't fault you on that statement. Mm. That is true. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and and this is quite a long comment, but I think we need to talk about it. And I won't mention the name because she mentions her family, but it's on the episode with Justice Mokeli living with dyslexia. She says, "My cousins have a form of learning disability. Their mom is an established mm, teacher who I think is extremely smart. However, she pressurized them into traditional schooling, even after she was advised by the school in primary and family." a very well established school she even forced different subjects on them the older boy was able to persevere and manage to pass matric and get into a tertiary institution but he did not survive the mom did everything from extra lessons to teaching him but nothing worked worked she could not accept her child's situation 
All of this resulted in my cousin resenting his mom as soon as he realized what happened to him. Guys, I remember going into my cousin's house and he was always locked up in his room studying. Now I thought so I thought the person loved reading and aspired to be like him. Gandhi, he had to work extra hard. The younger brother repeatedly failed high school. His mom even made him repeat grades he did not do so well in, but it still didn't work. Mm. and this is what i spoke about when i said the stigma is with i think on the episode the stigma is with parents as well you know it's like i don't want to see my child as a special needs child or who Mm. has who needs a different type of schooling you know i want my Mm. child to go to traditional schools any educator who works in inclusive um education schools or inclusive schools will tell you that this is one of the greatest challenges Mm. they meet even i mean um justice was like I knew I need, there was school for people like me, but I didn't want to be on that bus. Mm. If today mm. you told me you turn out well, mm. just go to that school. Mm. Even today, I still wouldn't mm. want to be on a school written, you know, mm. on a bus written yeah. this and that. Because of the stigma. The stigma. I mean, I was watching um, the series Young Sheldon. And the parents hated when they called their, his, their child special. Even though it's on the other end, like he's extremely intelligent. But like you know to have a special needs child is so offensive mm. you know mm. and like yeah it's just that it There's shouldn't be yeah that. it shouldn't be in fact because i can't even say there should be another word because special is a beautiful word mm. so you know if somebody and says I'm sure special, it was... it's a beautiful word mm. you know so i i don't even think the word in itself is offensive it's the, just a stigma around it really that we need to work on and i guess it's conversations like this yeah that keep reminding us to see the beauty yeah i've often thought about like triggers because i'm guessing that their child being called special is a trigger for the parents especially because of the connotations around the word special and I'm, i'm i've often just thought about how these days i think we are And it's understandable because no one knows a person's intentions, right? Like we're more obsessed with what a person said than we are with what their intentions were. Like you remember the day Ubonga when security made a comment and you got upset. And Ubonga was like, nah man, the intention of this person was just to make a joke. Yes. (laughs) Oh, I remember. I'm still angry when I think about it. Can I say what it was, Ubonga? Yeah. She walks in with McDonald's. And uh, the guy said something like, Hey, uh, that was wrong, guys. <laughs> please check, check, comment, please comment. That was wrong, guys. No. You, you understand? Look at Bonga's reaction, right? It's, now, it's, somebody, I would this throw is myself how, on the ground. This and is I would how Bonga. <laughs> this is how Bonga really <laughs> feels <laughs> about that situation. So it's 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 like. Mm. Look, you won't always be... And if it, he had touched on something that's a trigger to Ubonga, yes, it would I hear have been what you're a different saying. story. I hear what you're saying. What mm. triggers do we have? That's Going so back true. to... Yeah. Because now anything in Don't. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. That's so true. And you remember how touched I was because a friend of mine was um, mispronouncing your name. And then mm. I tell you and you're like... Oh. Always. Yes. And you're right, every time with my name, the people are like, I hope I, I don't offend you. I'm like, Exactly. You can never offend me, actually. I'm <laughs> like, it's, it's okay. It's not an easy name to pronounce. It's yeah, fine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, and other people with their name. And on um, the episode, yeah, my and Demetrios' story with Tulum Sibi, um, Busi says, Watching this, and I'm just reminded of all my childhood traumas of experiencing Islumo. That's period pains. The worst thing as was for elders, especially my grand, to say you are experiencing Islumo because you drag your feet when you walk. So you drag all the negative energies and evil things from the ground. So I carried this for years, thinking I'm being punished for dragging my feet when I walk. Thank God for a change in GP who immediately referred me to a gynae albeit at the age of 26, diagnosed with PCOS. Grateful that my gynae was able to diagnose. However, all they could recommend was met for me. Told me to lose weight and that was it. Shock. Please can you consider speaking about PCOS one day? I've met so many people since my diagnosis and most are also prescribed metformin. What is it? Metformin. Metformin. And told to lose weight. 
personal research told me there's so much more to picos to med for mind and losing weight thoroughly enjoyed this discussion hmm. the dragging feet thing mm. i think i growing up i was told to not sit on cold surfaces mm. that will um likely make my period pains worse yes i also heard cold surfaces i never struggled with period pains though mm. i've had on the odd occasion but i don't die 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 it's just a discomfort pain yes. a little bit. but i'm not somebody who struggles so i I never got told many things, but I remember feeling like I owe a defa because I didn't experience mm. it. Only now, the older I've gotten with these episodes, I'm also learning, you know, I'm also yes. learning. Then I'm like, damn. Because remember, I remember once in boarding school, there was a girl who was basically crippled from her period pains. Mm. She couldn't walk and she even was experiencing a kind of blindness. She's like, I can't see. I'm so Probably from her bo- body responding yes. to the pain. She's like, I can't see. I can't see. And I remember I was just like, yo, last got there in my mm. heart, you know, only now I'm just like, but I also just, you know, on the Picos, Picos is another one that we would definitely need to delve into deeper around the metformin. Why do they recommend metformin and losing weight? You know, just the knowledge around it, because I don't think that was an incorrect uh, treatment option for her mm. as she was suggesting almost. Mm. Um, and that's why they even test the different hormones as to which one is causing that likely an insulin uh, ba- imbalance. And then that's when they put you on the metformin and they tell you to lose a bit of weight because you're actually probably pre-diabetic anyway Ooh. and things like that. So just to avoid or prelong, you know, getting the actual diabetes. So I, I looked at that and I was like, actually, we need to have another episode where we really sit mm, on now P cost, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then on um, the episode to do with my intermediate still, um, Tobeka says, I suffer from the opposite of this. Also started going to the gynae very early in high school. I don't go on my periods at all unless I'm on contraceptives. 2019, I fell pregnant. I think it was a miracle because doctors confirmed I was I would struggle to fall pregnant because one of my hormone levels was too low. I wish there would be more shows that speak about these conditions and have gynecologists come in to explain what is happening to our bodies. Thanks for sharing your story, Tolo. Wow. Mm. So she didn't get periods. And then um, I come here and... Oh, mm-hmm. oh, sorry. This is where the person plugs fish. Oh. <laughs> the event. <laughs> I was actually very impressed with them. So somebody went onto the comment thing and said, if you want to know more about Tolo, go check her out on this or whatever. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Do what you got to do. Promote your event, boo. Yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I didn't even consider deleting it. I was like, you know, no. That that actually brings <laughs> brings us a bit to a bit of what we've been experiencing that mm-hmm. the audience tends to not experience. The thing of people just wanting to come and plug their things, not to oh, call yes. anyone out specifically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it's obviously we won't be able to get into it at length here. Uh, no problem with you posting something in the comments. However. Mm. I might block it. <laughs> it's a bit too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, mm-hmm. depending, because also we don't know what kind of an event you're sending our audience to, and we need to be very careful and responsible. Absolutely. Because now they've seen it on the TCC Absolutely. YouTube channel. Yeah. So just keep in mind that it's in it's it's in good faith. We're not trying to be mean, but mm-hmm. we need to be responsible as with, as much as we can. Yeah, exactly. You know, to the extent exactly. that we can protect. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, because we, and even just that, like. You know, if you, if you, like you're saying, people just want to like come promote something and like, what is, what is it for me to say this thing smells nice when I don't really think it's... You like, understand ah, what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, no. obviously not every product will resonate, even with the three of us mm, in this room. Mm. It might not resonate with us. So we want to be authentic and yes. say, you know, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which, yeah, it has been, it's been even more difficult for me. With like f- friends and family, I can imagine. Yeah, where it's like you know, and they'll call me Shash Girl. They're not calling me Ursula. They're not some <laughs> random from the internet. Shash Girl, hey man, can I come there and talk about this event? I'm like, firstly, yeah. it means you don't watch the show because we don't do that. Yes, you watch exactly. the show. You don't even support the show, you know. Yeah. But because you know me on a nickname basis, you know, and it's very difficult. Mm. It's you know, especially in that soft. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Please understand that it's not that I hate you, but you know. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think mm. it's important for us to explain that um, we are trying to build something very specific. 
Mm -hmm. um, and our audience comes, you yourself discovered this show because we built it in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. So if we deviate from that, there are repercussions. Like our audience might now start watching saying, ah, now they're it's an event show. Uh, <laughs> mm, yeah. You know, so we have to be, we want the show, to, even if we do, obviously we will feature sponsors in future, but we're trying to build a YouTube channel or rather a podcast mm. that is a, a good experience for the viewer Absolutely. from start to finish. Absolutely. And doesn't feel like, ah, it's always a long blagging, advert. A long advert. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. I remember being crushed by one of my favorite podcasters who like did a whole really long segment on Sprite. And I just felt even Spiking. a Sprite advert on TV is not this long. Imagine. <laughs> and I was so annoyed. I think it was like a whole game or something like that. Yo. And I was like around Sprite. I'm like, hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you guys don't know. You always see this thing here. This actually has branding. There's a reason and we put it we this way. We cut it off, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's so many things to look out for, things yeah. like that. Yeah, but actually, let's get to that when we when we discuss what it's been like having a YouTube. So yes, we, that's yes. in one of our next episodes. We do want to talk about the experience of having a YouTube channel, and um, yeah, what our experiences all three of us has been so far. And also, I think the other thing would be uh, Bonga. It's 10k. <laughs> you said you would show yourself. Don't worry, it's coming. 11k. We're holding her accountable, guys. We are holding her when she walked in with her hair like this. <laughs> I said, no, ma'am, you don't plan to be on camera like that. What is going on? She claims it's because she's sick. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, I'm not feeling well, guys. You can hear me. I still can't. I want you to have the best of me. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely we need to have Bonga on. At some point, we'll definitely get her on. Uh, yeah. Today is not the day, guys. Uh, and those people that were hustling to get to 10K, you betrayed them, Bonga. I just want you to know. I want them to fight harder. <laughs> but I must be honest, when we hit 10K, I was, I was surprised. Weren't you guys surprised? No. I remember. wasn't. No, remember we were recording on the oh, Saturday yes. we and we were sitting at 9,000. Yes. And yes. we were like, oh, probably oh, by yes. the month you're end right. next week when right. we record. Right. We record once a month. Chiggy chig. Then it was literally in the next week. And yes. we were just like, what yes. is going on? It was yes. beautiful though. It was a beautiful yes. surprise. It was yes. you know, it was lovely. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, the 10K journey. We are going to delve more into it. We do want to talk about our experience, the three of us, you know, just having since started. It's been a year and a half now mm -hmm. since we started and what that's been like. And that will be in another episode that we record. For now, though, I believe this is the episode, the Get Ready With Me episode. Once again, we thank you so much for all the support and love uh, everywhere on every platform. But if you are watching on another platform like TikTok or Facebook, uh, Instagram, make sure you cross over to YouTube, like, share and subscribe. It helps the channel immensely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the love and support. Goodbye and God bless.